So we've talked about property. The next thing which is also very important is how you finance the property. Now, I won't go into a long lecture on the finance, but very, very important with property is you get the right structure of finance. So if I was to say to you, if you're going to be buying an investment property, you should do an interest-only loan. Would that make sense? Well, because at the end of the day, if you're going to be paying back a loan, should you be paying back a loan where you're getting a tax deduction or a loan where you're not getting a tax deduction? So it's very important to look at which loan we repay first versus which we don't repay. So we need, because obviously we're going to need this house to finance this property. Because no bank is going to lend you 100% or 100% plus cost just on that property. They're going to want to take your house as security as well. So we need to structure the loan so that we ensure that the only debt we repay first is our non-deductible home mortgage. I've seen so many people do this the wrong way where they're not making the most of their tax deductions and the structure of their finance. The next thing that we're going to look at is equities. Now equities is obviously a very, very strong tool, but we need to look at how much time do you have to invest in equities? Do we do it ourselves? Do we use fund managers? Or do we just let the superannuation fund, which is really what you're doing at the moment, because at the moment all your investments are in equities, because your super is mostly in equities, and your shares. So that's another thing we need to look at. Should you be taking some of your savings, putting into a, an equities portfolio? What has more merit? Putting money directly into shares, paying off our mortgage. Or, very importantly, utilising what we call superannuation. Now we believe that superannuation is the most effective way of people to invest their money short of negative gearing into property. Australia is the only country in the world that lets us retire tax free effectively. The government gives us a tax deduction for putting money into super. So I believe superannuation for, should form an integral part of anybody's way of creating assets. Because when we get to here, we may not even need $60,000 because that's a $60,000 assuming you're paying tax. If we can get a lot of that paid tax free, that will take a lot of pressure off this amount. So <laughs> I believe that we need to look at the ways you're contributing into super, i.e. should you be putting more via salary sacrifice? Should we be taking advantage of the other government regulations? Should we be looking at how we're going to draw our pensions in the future? The other thing we can also look at is the merits of do we go with a manager or do we go with a self-managed super fund? Now one of the things you have expressed is interest in setting up your own superannuation fund. These are some of the things that we will need to look at. Do you want to take the responsibility of running your own self-managed super fund? Do you want to look at the opportunities at the moment of investing in property through superannuation? We have a now a, a limited, I would say, time opportunity where we can use our superannuation to gear into property. What it would mean though is that we have to increase our contributions. These are some very, very important things that we need to look at given your current situation. The next thing that we also need to look at is your risk position. We've, we've come to the conclusion that your most important asset is yourselves. Now, we all insure our houses, we insure our cars, but how many of us insure ourselves properly? Australia is pretty much the most underinsured country in the, in the Western world. What we need to look at is if you are going to go into a strategy of creating wealth over a period of time, that your income continues, and the way your income continues is that your health, one of the most important ways is that your health remains okay. 
and it does remain okay, that we have a backup. And that's what insurance is all about. So what we need to do is look at your life insurance, to make sure that you have adequate life insurance, that if anything does happen to either one of you, that your debts are repaid, you're still building wealth, you can still raise your children and maintain this lifestyle. That if you get disabled, you either get a lump sum or your income continues. If you get sick, such as a traumatic event like cancer, stroke, heart attack, that you're not going to be all of a sudden set back 10, 15 years. So we need to look at protecting your life in terms of your assets and your income. So these are just a few of the ways of getting to this final destination. Stop.